Hello everybody, this is your neighborhood friendly Oxhorn, or your friendly neighborhood Oxhorn, depending on how you stand. Uh, here we are to, again today in Fallout 4, and today I'm going to be showing you how the new switches, trip wires, and powered speakers, and paintball guns, and, and so on and so forth work in Fallout 4. Let's start today first with the paintball gun and the regular gun. Now these are considered traps. You find them in the defense section of your workshop and they're considered to be traps that are triggered and then attack something. Um, now I have them set up with these target switches. You shoot this little circle and that triggers the switch which turns on whatever's connected to it. So I set these in, in like a, a square so that they each trigger each other and they're all powered. Um, so let's start off by triggering this one. As you can see, the paintball gun shoots paintballs for a short period of time at the target. Now you can also see that the trajectory is quite wide. Um, and the same is true with this gun. I originally built this platform and I tried to angle them up so that they directly matched and I had them all the way down to the end here, <laughs> but I found that their trajectory was so wide that you could sit here for hours and they would not hit the target. I had to move them so close to the target just so that they had a chance of hitting them. So if you're hoping that these have pinpoint accuracy, you're sadly going to be mistaken. You need to have them very close to whatever it is you want them to hit. Now, since they are traps, after a while, they stop working. And in order to get them to work again, you have to repair them. So I'm gonna go ahead and repair them. And once repaired, you see this little uh, uh, icon on the back, it goes to armed. That means that it's ready to go. So then you can just pull out your gun and trigger it again. So the paintball hits the target, which triggers this one, and then that gun hits that target, which doesn't really do anything because it's all connected up. Now the guns and paintball guns do actually hurt you, but not a whole lot, so you don't need to worry about dying. There, and you see that now that it's done, it switches to empty. It now says that it's empty, and you're going to have to repair them to uh, get them working again. So pretty cool, pretty clever. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that there are a lot of really clever ways to use these in sort of a Rube Goldberg machine. Um, I find that in terms of defense, they're not going to be very useful. I wouldn't have put these in the defense category of the workshop just because I can't see these being used as a practical mode of defense in any settlement's fortifications. But as a fun little gimmick they sure are neat, and they're probably going to work good with all sorts of contraptions. Now, the way I used these uh, firing targets with the, the guns over here is actually not the best use for these. They have more complicated functions. So this one over here, the blue one, is actually a toggle. And this one over here, the yellow one, is a pulse. Now, what I've done is I've hooked up some lights to these switches so you can see how they work. Here's the toggle. Watch the light beneath it. It toggles the light off every time it's struck. Let's try that again. It toggles the light back on. Now this one's a pulse. Watch the light beneath it. It pulsed electricity to the light very briefly. There you see, it pulsed it again. So this is good if you're wanting to uh, send electricity to something that sort of imitates the way that you're firing at it. It's just real brief. And this one, if you actually want it to function as a real legitimate switch, it turns electricity on or off. Now, let's talk a little bit about the new switches that came with uh, Contraptions Workshop and these new little speakers. So, 
you can see there's an assortment of new speakers, each which has a different colored box. And I have them hooked up to a variety of different switches, and I'll go through them one by one. So this first one is the blip speaker, and I have it connected to your traditional pressure plate that came with vanilla Fallout 4, and it works just like this. It makes a blip. Let's hear that again. Okay, pretty nice. Now, the nice thing about all of these speakers is you can adjust the tone, or the pitch, rather, in your terminal. So you can go on over to your terminal, which is connected right here, and you can scroll through all of the different connected items, including all of the different speakers. So here's a speaker, and you can choose the pitch you want. And it actually has the notes, E4, F4 sharp, you can go through all of them. So potentially, you could set these up in such a way so that they play a song when triggered. But in order to get something like that to work, I'm trying to think about how that would work, and the mind just boggles. Like, the only way I could think about it is if you had a long ball track like this. And if you had some ball track switches, like the ones I have over here that I showed off in my ball track video, basically the ball goes down and triggers the switch. If you have a whole bunch of those in a line, and you time it perfectly, then maybe you could get something to play. But um, <clears throat> that would be a heck of a lot of work and finagling. But let's go through the other ones. So this yellowish one is the explosion speaker, and this is what it sounds like. Did you hear it? Let's try that again. Yeah, it's kind of faint, but there it goes. This reddish one is the percussion speaker, and this is what it sounds like. Sounds like percussion. This blue speaker is the triangle speaker. Now, the ones that are named after shapes actually refer to the waveform of the sound. So if you were to look at the waveform, it would look like a triangle. So let's hear what a triangle looks like. And these shaped ones are different from the others because as long as the trap is triggered, it continues to play. These turn off, right? It's no longer playing, but these continue to play until you get off the switch. Uh, now here's a cool one. I've got the this light teal looking one. This is the square speaker. It produces a sound that has a square shape on uh, a waveform. And I connected it to this basketball hoop switch. And this is triggered whenever you put a ball through it. So let's put a ball through it. And see what happens. Wow. <laughs> let's see if we can get this to trigger for longer. There you go. So that's the sound the square makes. And that is how the basketball switch works. Now, this laser trip wire we're all familiar with because this actually came in vanilla uh, Fallout 4. Let me change the time of day so that it's dark so that you can see the laser better. There we go, now you can see the laser really well. Uh, what color is this? It's white. So the white speaker is the Cine or sign, and that also refers to the shape. It's basically flat, and this is what happens when it's triggered. That's right, it just continues to play, and in order to uh, turn it off, you have to reactivate the laser trip wire. And that turns it off. Now this orange speaker is just a powered speaker, huh? I forget which sound it makes, but I've connected it to this laser tripwire switch. This is new in uh, Contraptions Workshop, and uh, it's actually, you find it in a non-intuitive place. These blue laser tripwires are actually found in the conveyor belt section. Um, you know what? I haven't tried snapping it to a conveyor belt, but maybe that's why it's in that section. Anyway, it's just a laser tripwire, and the switch works like this. As long as you switch it, it remains on. And then to turn it off, you have to flip the switch again. See how it's off right now, it's red, and then when I flip it, it turns green, and then when I backtrack, 
it turns off again. So a simple on off switch. Now this yellow speaker is the pulse vibrato speaker. And uh, this is a different kind of switch. Watch what happens when I trip it. It only delivers power while the laser is actually tripped. So whatever object you're using to trip this needs to actually stand in the way of the beam of light in order to trip that. So let me stand in it. There you go. The pulse vibrato continues to play while I stand in it, but as soon as I move, it stops playing. Okay, this makes more sense. That's why they were in the conveyor belt section. They do snap onto conveyor belts. All right, well, hey, I'm learning something here. And uh, they do snap, they're really easy to play, so you can just pull this open. And there you go. It snaps to the sides. So let's test it out. <laughs> there it is. So this is the one that sent power only while it was being tripped. And this is the one that acts like a switch and needs to be turned off. And there it goes. Great, so that actually makes things a little bit easier for me to imagine some sort of song being created with these powered speakers because now, if you can set these along a conveyor belt and set them really close together, then you could put on the conveyor belt a whole bunch of balls or something that moves a little bit more quickly, like a jar of acid, a whole bunch of jars of acid, and it'll just go da 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 all the way through. <laughs> Pretty cool. So there you go. Those are the new laser trip wires and uh, all of the new speakers and switches that came with Contraptions Workshop. Now let's talk a little bit about these. These are the new marquee set and they're fairly simple. You've got these nice little glowing light bulbs and then this is actually a new illuminated poster. These are in the wall decorations section and then this is really cool. This is a lit marquee. You can put any kind of text on here that you want. It comes with all sorts of little transparent letters and you can write anything you want. It has six different rows that you can fill with all of your lettering and you do have to manually power it to a, to a, a power source. Now the rest of these work just like regular lights. <clears throat> all you have to do is place these conduits on the back and power them up and as long as the lights are affixed next to something that receives power, they will work. Let's set the hour to daylight. All right, so that's it. And with this video, I round off everything new with Contraptions Workshop. That's right, I've produced a video for every single object, whether it's small or big, whether it's a conveyor belt or a ball track, whether it's a speaker or a marquee, I've done a video on absolutely everything that I could find. But I'm only human, I make mistakes. Did I miss something? If you can think of a huge omission or error, please leave a comment below and I will be sure to address it in an upcoming video. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, for my Mechanist's Lair video. I'm putting everything that I've learned in these videos together for that settlement, and I hope to put together an awesome factory for you in my Mechanist's Lair. Stay tuned for more Fallout 4 and Contraptions work Workshop content, and please subscribe because your subscriptions keep this channel alive. Thank you very much for watching, and make Warcraft great again.